What's up YouTube? For today's tutorial, I wrote another bit of custom code for this channel, and we're basically gonna cover a unique sticker interaction you can add to your Webflow projects. So I have an example of this. Uh, basically, anytime you click anywhere on the page, it adds a random sticker each time. The sticker disappears after a couple seconds, and you can scroll up and down the page, adding stickers wherever you'd like. This is another good example of Slack design. You just click and add stickers anywhere you want to the page. So I'm going to link the code to this in the description of this video. But basically, we want to start off by copying this style tag. And we want to paste it in our page settings. Um, the style code would go inside the head tag section here. Now, we'll also want to copy the second part, the script tags. And then all that code would go inside the closing body tag here. And then we can just save. So on the page, there actually needs to be a div that's going to hold all our stickers. And uh, we can, we have to call this div by a specific class. It would be all lowercase and it's called tricks-stickers, plural. Now inside that, there'll be a bunch of images and this will also need a specific class. It will be uh, tricks-sticker, singular, in all lowercase. Now we can add as many images as we'd like to this. We can even add combo classes to an image, say if we wanted to make them all different sizes or different things. Um, we can kind of just style them how we'd like from here. We can also style them across breakpoints. So if you want to make each sticker a different size based on the screen size, that's totally fine. Uh, you can style them all directly in Webflow, which is really cool. Um, now, we'll also need a wrapper that every section, the hero, the footer, all of it on our site needs to be inside this wrapper. And it needs to have a specific class of overflow, all lowercase. And that needs to have a width of 100%, overflow of hidden, and a position of relative. Those three properties are really important. Say we were to click and a sticker was hanging off the edge of the page, we wouldn't want it to cross horizontal scrolling. So we need to have these properties set right here. Other than that, that's really everything we need for this to go live. Um, we can set this sticker container to display none because we don't want to actually see any stickers until we start clicking. And then once we publish, and um, really anywhere we click on the site, uh, it should be able to add a sticker for us. So I click, it adds different stickers and they're disappearing after a couple seconds. Um, and it's just looping through our list of stickers. So after it gets to the last sticker in our list, it'll just restart again on the first sticker. Um, so if we look in our custom code, the first thing that we could really change is this time here. This is how long after you click does it wait before the sticker disappears. This is set to two seconds, but we could easily increase it to one or decrease it, increase it to three or incre decrease it to one. We could even do two and a half seconds here. Um, and then you're seeing to hide the sticker, it's actually adding a class of sticker hide, which is defined in our CSS. And all that's doing is basically scaling the sticker down. Um, if we wanted to hide it some other way, maybe with opacity or something, we could set the opacity to zero and use any CSS here. Um, the sticker class itself has sort of a transition applied to the scale. That's what's allowing it to scale slowly down to zero and not just instantly disappear. Um, if you wanted to hide the sticker using some other method, you would just need to add a CSS transition here and apply it to opacity or whatever you plan to use. Don't apply it to margin or some of those move properties, like all properties though, um, because that's what we're actually using to position the sticker in the custom code. Um, another thing is right now a sticker is being added anywhere we click on the whole site. But if we want, only want it, maybe the sticker to be added inside this, um, it may be any time we click inside the hero, for instance, we could do that pretty simply. All we need to do is copy the class of the hero. It could be a combo class or anything. And then um, when we scroll down to our code here, this sort of on click right now, it's saying anytime we click anywhere on the body, we could easily replace that with a class, maybe the hero, the footer, or any section we're looking for specifically. And now I can publish this and test it out. So now if I refresh, anywhere I click on the footer, it's not actually adding a sticker. But if I click inside the hero, now stickers are being added. So you can control how long you want it to wait before it fades, and then um, how it fades or disappears. Um, and then you can also control where you want to be able to click. So actually, um, if you're watching this video pretty close to when it was released, 
I've decided that I'm actually going to release this site as a clonable. I don't know for how long, but I'll put that in the description of this video right now as well. So if you want to clone this project and experiment with the interactions or experiment with the stickers, feel free to do that just to learn how it was built and set up. Also, if you're interested in learning how to build some of these interactions with jQuery and JavaScript, on the Tricks Patreon page, I'm actually starting to publish some tutorials. I have one up for this project specifically and for another project I've done. Um, but if you're interested in learning how to create your own unique interactions that elevate your Webflow project above other projects with a little bit of custom code, I have tutorials um, I'm releasing on the Patreon page specifically for learning JavaScript and jQuery. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.